Hey friends, how are you? Thanks for meeting me tonight and uh, I hope that you're settling into our new normal, our social distancing now stay at home order in Ohio. And just in case you, like me, are getting uh, a little bored uh, in between when I'm working, I want to tell you that there are, if you haven't heard about this, there are all kinds of opportunities online. There are museums that have gone, li gone live where you can take a virtual tour and uh, all kinds of other opportunities, including just before I came out here to join you tonight, I was at Disney World. Virtually, of course, but I rode Space Mountain and Splash Mountain, and uh, I can't wait to uh, get back and ride a couple of others. So just look it up. It's all there on YouTube. There's so much available out there. Uh, we don't really need to go stir crazy at this time. The other thing that we can do is to really reach out and support one another. I realize that we're kind of confined in our homes, although the sunshine was certainly nice today, wasn't it? We could get out a little bit and get a little bit of that vitamin D that they're telling us is so good for us. But when we're in, give somebody a call, particularly some of the older folks that we know who might be alone and not have any family nearby. I'm sure that they're getting lonely about this time. They rely on things like coming to church and going to the grocery store. So give them a call. You'll make their day, I promise. Remember, like I told you before, the building is not the church. We are the church, so let's be the church now more than ever. You know, with everything else that there is a possibility to do, tomorrow should be one of my favorite days of the whole year. Because you see, tomorrow should be opening day of the baseball season. Now, as we all know, it's not going to be. Unfortunately, no batter is going to grab a bat and Nobody's going to grab their glove and take the field because most of the MLB teams have gone home. I think that there's only a few random players working out still at spring training parks and then with the mandate that they can't actually gather together. Of course, we can't have gatherings of more than 10 people. So while the bats are put away, at least for the time being, I've been thinking about all kinds of other baseball that I love, everything that I've experienced before. The MLB Network happens to be airing a lot of the classic games. And just the other night, I finally got to see the entire game of Bucky Dent's very famous home run. If you're a Boston fan, you might not want to watch that game, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've also been thinking a lot about my favorite baseball player of all time, Yogi Berra. And of course, Yogi was known for his yogiisms. And I'll bet you wouldn't think of those as being uh, bits of wisdom. But the more I've gotten to think about what Yogi had to say, the truth is I do think that there's a lot of wisdom in it, a lot of things that we can learn. Take, for example, one time he said that 90% of the game is half mental. And everybody thought he was nuts. But the reality is I read something that Yogi wrote about that, and he said that it was about thinking, that the majority of the game was not about working out and stretching and uh, being physically fit and strong. That's important to be sure. But if you go out on the field and you're not thinking, if your head isn't in the game, then you're really not going to be able to ex succeed, especially not at the um, third base. The Dodgers thought that he was stealing signs, said that the truth was he wasn't stealing signs, he was just paying attention. He was watching the way that the batters angled their feet. He knew where the ball was going to come and based on the batter's stance, he had studied the game enough to know where they were going to hit that ball. And so he was easily able to throw out the batter trying to take it to third. And you know, the same thing about 90% of the game being half mental could also be said about our faith and our relationship with God, particularly in a time like we find ourselves right now. Yogi's strange saying could actually offer us a little bit of insight into how we can weather this current storm and get through this, this current crisis. Not just get through it, but actually grow from it. You see, we could say that 90% of our life with God and our faith is half mental. Because when we remember God, when we focus on God, then what we're going to remember is how present God with, is with us in every moment. We're going to remember all of God's promises and God's love for us. 
And as we're reminded of us of that, not only are we going to be lifted up, but we're going to be reminded that we're not in this alone. Like we talked on Sunday, God is always with us. And not only with us, but God is for us. And God is leading us. This reminded me of another bit of wisdom, not from Yogi, but from the Bible. We find it in the third chapter of Proverbs, in which the wisdom writer says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will in all you do, and God will show you with path, which path to take. That's the path to getting through this. That's the way to do it. It's a matter of focus. It really is all about the mental game. We can read the Bible and pray all we want, but we really need to be focused mentally on God, on being aware that God is with us, on tuning in to all of those aspects of beauty. And we'll be posting more of those on our Facebook site, thanks to the wonderful photography of Seth Schaefer. When we think about all that God has done for us in the past, and we focus on God's faithfulness and God's love and the ways that it has always steered us, then we know for a fact that God is going to steer us clear in this situation as well. Even though the situation might look completely dark and we may feel like we're floundering, not knowing where to go, the psalmist or the, the, psal, the Proverbs writer reminds us that God will guide our paths. How can God guide us through the darkness? Easy. There is no such thing as darkness for God. God is light. So by God's very nature, darkness cannot exist in God's presence. So as we draw near to God, God will guide us through the darkness because God is our light. He knows where we're going because God has prepared the path for us. Only God can know the possible outcome of every single moment. So only God can lead us in the best possible path. When we focus on that, then we will be headed in the right direction. Going on a path reminds me of something else that Yogi said. He said, if you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. And again, that is truer than you might think. I told you when you really start thinking about Yogi's words, they make a lot more sense and hold a lot more wisdom than we ever might think. When we're trusting in God, both in our hearts and in our minds, then we've already got the road map. We know where we're going, even though we may not know what the destination is, because we walk hand in hand with the guide. Jesus is our guide. God is the one who has laid the path out before us and has paved not only our past and our present, but our future as well. So when we can trust in God, when we can focus on all that God has done for us, even in the scary times and how God has led us through, then we're going to come through. And as I said before, not only are we going to come through, we're going to come through stronger and more faith-filled than we ever were before. Usually Lent is a time when we meditate and focus on our relationship with God. And nobody ever saw that we would be doing that in this way. But truly, this current health crisis is a wilderness of its own. And it's provided us with opportunities to get to know God better. Because in these moments of darkness, the best thing to do is to turn to the light. God is our light. So I can't tell you when baseball season will start. In fact, this breaks my heart, but I can't even tell you if it will start, although I'm quite hopeful that at some point it will. What I can tell you is that when we focus on God and God's love for us, when we remember God's promises and let that mental part of life's game lead us to trust in God and allow God to guide our path, then we will know where we're going and we will make it through. And we're going to make it through hand in hand and step in step with God. And what a better way to get through this or any other crisis. God is with us in our joys and in our struggles. He is our constant help and our refuge. Let us walk with God and know that God is always with us. Amen. As we close out now in a time of prayer, we, of course, want to remember all of those who are working so hard on the front lines for us. 
And so let us lift up and pray for all of those, as well as those who have been uh, so affected uh, in many ways very personally by this current crisis. And so I invite you, our hearts joined together uh, in, in love of God. Let us pray together. Loving God, be with us. Comfort us, hold us, and guide us. We trust in you, God. We know that you are our guide. We know that just as you created us lovingly for a purpose, that you walk with us and you will guide us toward that purpose. Every step of the way, God, you show us the path that we can take. And when we go off path, God, you will gently, as we allow you to, lead us back until we find our way with you once again. God, we know that the path we are currently walking, while not what we would have chosen, is not the path for the rest of our lives. We know that it is merely through a valley that we now walk, but that you will lead us once again onto the mountaintop when we trust in you and follow your guidance. And so, God, we pray that you would bless all of your people throughout the world living in the midst of this pandemic and the uncertainty and fear that it has brought into our lives. We pray especially for those on the front line, our doctors and nurses, the orderlies and all of those who work in our health care system, doing their very best to keep up with the demand and to keep us safe. We pray also, God, for our first responders, those who respond even though they put them, their own selves on the line in doing so. We pray for those who have already lost their lives and their families as well as those who even now have tested positive and are in hospitals or quarantined at home trying to get better. We pray in all ways, God, that your healing hand would not only be upon them, but upon our planet, and that in all ways you would show us how we can overcome this virus. We pray for those who are working to find solutions to this, whether it be treatments or an eventual cure, God, we pray that you would open their hearts and minds and show them the way to go. Be their guides, even as you are our guide. And through it all, God, we trust in you. Show us the way to the health and the wholeness that we seek in our world. Bless all of those in our lives, especially those that we lift up to you now in the silence of this sacred moment. Thank you, God. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness. Go with each of us as we part this night. Keep us all safe and watch over us and remind us most of all that we can trust in you and follow you because you are our light, our love, and our God. Amen. One last thing before I sign off tonight. I have a question for you. What does social distancing, the coronavirus, and flat Jesus have in common? Any guesses? Check out our Facebook page tomorrow, and I'll be posting a video to let you know what the answer is. I've got something special in store for all of our youngest members who are stuck at home right now. We want to make sure that you're able to continue growing in your faith as well. And I've got something very special coming for you tomorrow. Until then, be safe, be kind to one another, and God bless us all. Amen.